this book called Communion with God. It was given to me uh, by, uh, it was written by Pacific, no, someone put it together, Pacific Press. It's a devotional guide for, for prayer meetings. And it came out a while ago. I've never seen it before, but it's, it's quite a good book if you're seeking a deeper prayer walk. But this evening we're going to focus on, what's that? The name of it is called Communion with God, and it's produced by Pacific Press. Uh, it was written in 1964, so that's when it originally came out um, to the Adventist church, and this copy was redone in 2013. Um, but you can, I think they still have copies available at the Adventist Book Center. I, I didn't know that this was a, a book that was quite common used in prayer meetings, and for those you know, having special prayer services, but there was a, a chapter that kind of um, caught my eye this past week. When my mom was on vacation in Ohio, I got a call from my dad, and he said, I need your help tomorrow, it's urgent. And then I find out he wants me to take him down to get his driver's license. <laughs> and I already told my mom, I was like, I don't want to take him to get his driver's license, but it, how do you tell your dad no? Uh, and so I thought, well, We'll just see how it goes. I'm going to take him down to get his driver's license. Um, so some of you have met my dad. He's, he's got a disease like Parkinson's. He's had it since he was around 30 years old. And uh, so um, he didn't drive down. I drove him down. He has, a, he has a, li a driver's license that's valid in Ohio. So all he's got to do, he's going to take a test. He's just got to get it transferred. And you got to pass an eye test. And he's like, it's like well, Dad, why can't we just drive? you like, well, because if I want to fish, I want to go fish. And if your mom's out of town and I can't get a hold of you, I just want to have a van so I can go fish. And so he's got three or four ponds that are close by. So that, well, God, it's your will. He gets it. He'll get it. And so the whole ride down, we're, we're talking, and we're not talking about his driver's license anymore. He's telling me all kinds of angel stories. Aww. And so he talks about guarding angels and how angels have helped him in life. And I was like, well, we'll see how this goes. And we get there, and I said, I don't know if the building's even open. There's not a car in the lot. And so I drove to another building, so you got to go to the Kimball to get your transfer, and it was a building for children's services. And I'm like, well, this isn't it. It can't be that lot. There's not a car over there. And so I go over there, and it's the building. I said, it's got to be closed. But I open up. They have eight people there working, but not one person in the whole building. I was like, how does this work out that it's a day? And I know my dad's going to take time because he's got Parkinson's. He's, got, he's shaking, and we're trying to go there. But we are the only people in the building until he finally finishes. And it took probably a half an hour, and, and, and then we left. In fact, he, he, he told them to check out itiswritten.com. So that's for you, Jeff. He, he tells everybody he didn't have his books or literature. He's like, check out itiswritten.com. It is a great site, and amazingfacts.com. They're really great sites. It'll be a blessing to all you ladies. <laughs> and so we left, and he was super happy because he got his driver's license. And uh, so he'll have a, an official Tennessee license uh, and keep my dad in prayer. Just, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure he'll do fun. I was like, well, if Tennessee grants him the license, it's their job to do their due diligence, and they, they feel that he's okay to, dr to drive. And he pretty probably is okay for short distances. I wouldn't have him drive me to Ohio, but probably to a pond. And I think he tried it coming to your house, Jack, so maybe he's got one day of practice so far. And I thought, that's a tough drive. But now getting back to this, the whole conversation there was about angels, and the whole conversation back home was about angels. My dad has a lot of angel stories, and growing up I heard a lot of angel stories, and I love stories about angels, and later on that evening I was thinking, well, what, what am I going to do for prayer meeting this week? And I opened up this book, and it came to angels and what? Amen. Ministry and prayer. And I never even thought about angels getting involved in our prayer life. I, I always think they're guardian angels, they protect us, and they, they're around God's throne, but I never realized until I read some of these quotes that angels are very involved and active in our prayer life. And there were angels here this evening. And there are angels here right now. Yes. And we're going to look at some of these quotes together. And if something comes to your heart or mind that you want to share, we still have a mic to go around. In fact, I wouldn't mind if we actually had some folks help to read. And maybe, are you okay with reading a quote? Why don't you go ahead and read the first, first quote there. And uh, the, yeah, so we're, we're looking at the answers. The question is, what service do angels perform with reference to prayer. So angels have active services they perform when it comes to praying. And so you go ahead and read the first uh, answer there. Angels present prayers to God, also record them. 
Those who look unto Jesus day by day and hour by hour, who watch unto prayer, are dawn, drawing nigh to Jesus. Angels with wings outspread wait to bear their contrite prayers to God and to register them in the books of heaven. Mm -hmm. Bible Commentary, Volume 4, page 1184. So when we pray, there's a recording angel. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Every time you say a prayer, there's a recording angel that's recording that prayer. And there's another angel, I guess, that takes the prayer up to God. They're actively, actively involved in our communication. Isn't that amazing? It's pretty amazing that our angels are there as you're saying it. They're like, we're writing this down. This is good stuff. And we're like, I, can't, I can't wait to take this back to God. And you can find instances of that in the book of Daniel, too. And Daniel's praying, and an angel comes to, to give an answer. So if you go ahead and read the next... Uh, Pair, our next comment there. Appointed to answer. Heavenly beings are appointed to answer the prayers of those who are working unselfishly for the interests of the cause of God. The very highest angels in the heavenly courts are appointed to work out the prayers which ascend to God for the advancement of the cause of God. Each angel has his particular post of duty, which he is not permitted to leave for any other place. So think about this. When you ask God to do something for someone else, who's going who's gonna to go and, and answer that? God has angelic beings, so when you're saying, hey, God, will you go and send protection to my child? God says, okay, angel so-and-so, go. <laughs> so when we ask God and give him permission, God has angels already set to go and provide answers for those prayers. And I wonder if an angel says, man, I went there yesterday, and they, they were just such a pain do I have to fly back down there and help that person again, keep them out of trouble? Or do you think, yes, God, thank you, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And I, I was thinking, I was, it was interesting because someone shared last week of a story of how their car broke down in New York. They were in a bad, bad part of New York. And their car broke down, and it was, some of you know it was Faye. You know Faye? Her husband just passed away. It was Faye and her son, Larry. And it broke down in Harlem, New York. It was just him and his mom. And he was, he was a young guy. And it breaks down. It's getting close to dark. It's, it's broken down the middle of the road. And he's like, Mom, how can I move this car? And, she's like, and so they call their dad. He's like, I'm not coming over. Just leave it where it's at. He's like, we've got to get off the road, and I can't move it. And he said a stranger came out of nowhere. Because he said he and his mom, his mom said, let's just pray. And so they prayed. A stranger comes over and says, do you need help? He said, the guy looked kind of just like a homeless man. He said... He grabs a car by himself and pushes this big, heavy car with the steering column, just pushes it, parallel parks it by himself. <laughs> and Larry's just aghast, like, what in the world did this guy just do? How did he do that? I couldn't even hardly budget car. It's one of those big, heavy metal cars from back in the days. And, and Larry's just a teenager, and he looked around, and the guy is gone. And his mom said, I told you prayer works. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? Angels are ready to show up. Maybe they'll show up like a homeless guy to move your car. I don't know. <laughs> but I do know angels are constantly at work saying, okay, Lord, what do you want us to do? And God says, well, this prayer just came. Go. And they're excited to do it. And as Larry shared that, I said, sometimes God uses us to be the angels. There are times in life you might go somewhere and God uses you. And I know Bill Wyatt, who's a big prayer back at our, our church in Jasper, he, he always like passes out books wherever he goes. He was at a gas station and gave a, gave a book to a girl and her, her marriage was falling apart and she was having all kinds of issues about to lose her home and she was crying when he gave her the book and then she looks at the book and has a big picture of Jesus on it. And so she runs out because that's what she needed because she was thinking about her childhood and she went up to say thank you to Bill but he had left. And she said, God, thank you for this angel that gave me this book about Jesus. I'm going to read it. And inside the book was a label from Jasper SDA Church, your friends. And this is down in Georgia. So she wrote our church a letter and said, I don't know. An angel brought me this book, and it's from your church. But I want to thank God that an angel brought me a book from your church. <laughs> really, it was Bill Wyatt. But Bill was that angel for that, that lady. And you don't know when God might use you to be an angel for that day. All right, there's another paragraph or answer to follow. Uh, we'll go to this side. Will you go ahead and read the next answer? Obey instantly. Ministering angels are waiting about the throne to instantly obey the mandate of Jesus Christ to answer every prayer offered in earnest living faith. I like that word instant. Go ahead and, and pass it down. We'll come to our help. We may, through the exercise of faith and prayer, 
called to our side a retinue of heavenly angels who will guard us from every corrupting influence. So think about that. Angels just don't answer prayers to provide help or food or moving cars. They actually protect you from corrupting influences. Amen. So they're there to act maybe as a conscience to whisper a, a thought into your ear. Oh, he can't hear. Yeah. Go ahead. Bring many blessings. Angels are constantly bringing blessings and hope, courage and help to the children of men. Right. Next little part. Yeah. Strength and grace have been provided through Christ to be brought by ministering angels to every believing soul. Mm. So angels don't just come to help, but they also provide encouragement. I wonder if sometimes maybe when we're having our devotionals and maybe an angel helps us open the Bible to just the verse that you needed. I never thought about these things until I was reading this. Our angels are a lot more involved in our devotional life than we could probably imagine, both in our prayer life and probably in our Bible study life. And angels love to be found where people are worshiping God. When we're having Bible study, when we're having prayer, where we're giving praise, that's where God's angels want to be. And I'll bet you, not bet you, I know tonight there are probably God's angels pushing evil angels out. Because I know that there are evil angels probably who want to distract and take away from the blessings we could get. But God sends down angels and says, look, I want you to go and I want you to fight off these bad angels so they don't distract and take away from the blessings that are available for my children tonight. All right. Choose our words and actions. Who would be willing to read that? Would you go ahead and read that one there? Choose our words, influence our actions. When you rise in the morning, do you feel helplessness, your helplessness, and your need of strength from God? That's not if so. If so, angels mark your prayers. And if these prayers have not gone forth out of feigned lips, when you are in danger of unconsciously doing wrong and exerting an influence which will lead others to do wrong, your guardian angel will be on by your side, prompting you to a better course, choosing your words for you and influencing your actions. Think about that. They actually help choose your words and influence your actions. The first time I met an angel, if on my side, it influenced me in a powerful way. I was in a city I'd never been in before. It's a huge city with a large boulevard, and I was going to cross it. And I looked carefully and saw no cars. I started to step off the curb. And someone behind me yelled, Look out! It was so strong it made me jump back. I was in London. They drive on the other side. I looked a long way. Oh. The taxi just barely missed me. I looked back to thank the man. He wasn't there. Uh -huh. was the I was at Hyde Park, and there was no one around. Wow. <laughs> I'm sure everyone in this room, if we took time to reflect in our lives, we know there are times that there's been miraculous intervention. And I will tell you, an angel was part of that. I want to close with this comment before we have our final prayer. Why do we pray so little? What can the angels think of poor, helpless human beings who are subject to temptation when God's heart of infinite love yearns toward them, ready to give them more than they can ask or think? And yet they pray so little and have so little faith. The angels love to bow before God. They love to be near Him. They regard communion with God as their highest joy. And yet the children of earth who need so much help that God only can give seem satisfied to walk without the light of His Spirit, the companionship of His presence. I want to challenge and encourage you, if you have the book Steps to Christ, I hadn't read it in a while. I'm going to give another challenge, a Sabbath to read a chapter. But tonight I'm going to challenge you to read a different chapter than the one I'm going to tell you a Sabbath. I challenge you to read the chapter, Privilege of Prayer. And I don't know the chapter number <laughs> right offhand. I wish I did. But I challenge you to read that chapter to realize what a blessing and privilege. It is a privilege. It's an honor to be able to have access to God. And uh, 
the blessings that are ours, but also angels love to be there too. And so we have an opportunity. I think God enjoys it when we take time to talk with him. So I'm going to close by um, final prayer by sharing this prayer thought in the book, if we can bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the courage and strength and help brought to us by our holy angels. And may we be conscious of their presence every hour. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.